For a long time, I always wondered why Nintendo had never made a Super Mario Brothers movie. I'll make a monkey out of you, plumber. Trust the fungus. Well, I mean, an animated Mario movie. Yeah, definitely animated. The games had all the makings of a great movie. You got a diverse world of characters. You got lots of different locations, lots of different ways to use these characters. Like in Mario Kart or Mario Party or even the basic platforming games. Heck, they even have fighting potential just because of Super Smash Bros. There are limitless ways you can use this series in film. So obviously, I got really excited when the Super Mario Brothers movie got announced. And I'm happy to say that after watching it, after all these years of waiting, this film was worth the wait. Man, I was really happy, really glad with the result. It's a fun film with great animation and a decent story that aligns well with the games. Just so you know, spoilers ahead if you haven't seen the movie already. Massive spoilers, we're going through everything. So if you haven't seen it, click away. But if you have or just don't care, let's let's get into this thing. The movie starts us out with the Mario Bros in New York, just quitting their jobs to start a new plumbing business. No one in their family thinks this is a good idea, especially their father. Kind of like my family when I said I wanted to make videos for a living. Just a joke, mom. Just a joke, dad. <laughs> But then an opportunity presents itself to prove themselves. All of Brooklyn just, for some reason, starts flooding. The bros go to fix the flooding, and then we get a brief cameo from Mayor Pauline. Which, I was flipping out in my seats. My girlfriend was like, what the heck you doing? I didn't have the heart to tell her. <laughs> the bros then find and fall into one of the iconic green drains and are transported into the new world. Now you may be thinking, well, what happened with the flooding? Well, forget about it because it's never mentioned again. Never. If it was mentioned, I clearly missed it. And if it was mentioned, please leave it down in the comment section below. But for the sake of this video, forget about it. It didn't happen. While they're traveling in this tube, they get separated. Mario goes to the Mushroom Kingdom and Luigi goes to the Dark Lands. Or the Dark Forest. I don't remember what it's called, actually. Just something dark. Something that insinuates evil. While he's here, we get a really cool Luigi's Mansion sequence, which ends with him getting captured by Bowser's forces. This one scene gave me hope for spinoffs. I want a Luigi's Mansion spinoff. Please. Por favor. I loved this sequence. This was, a, this was really well done. It makes me hopeful for if and most likely when they start doing spinoffs. Mario then meets Toad and Peach, and tries to convince them to help him free Luigi from Bowser. Peach is like, hey man, I was about to go to the Kong Kingdom to try to get an army to help fight Bowser. Do you want to come with and help out? And Mario's like, sure. And she goes, well, I don't actually know if you have the ability to keep up with me, so I'm going to test you real quick. So she ends up testing Mario when the test is a typical Mario game platformer. It's just what we've seen in the games. Who's ever playing Mario in this movie must be an absolute noob because Mario sucks at platforming in this movie. He just fails over and over and over again all night, just continues to fail. He almost completes it in the morning, but still fails. But Peach is impressed by his effort and improvement and decides to let him come anyway. Meanwhile, we cut away to Bowser where we learn his master evil plan. He goes into full Thanos mode and steals the invincible star in order to impress Peach so he will fall in love with him and get married. He steals the infinity stones in order to impress Death so that she might fall in love with him. Wait, wait, sorry, that's Thanos. No, he steals the star, the invincible star, in order to impress Peach so that she will fall in love with him and get married. And if she doesn't, he'll destroy the whole Mushroom Kingdom. We then cut back to Mario, Peach, and Toad as they travel to the Kong Kingdom to recruit the monkeys to help fight Bowser. The king agrees, but only if Mario can defeat Donkey Kong in battle. Big action sequence short, Mario defeats Donkey Kong, and the Kongs agree to help. They all then proceed to get into carts and leave for the Mushroom Kingdom. Bowser finds out about this and ambushes them on Rainbow Road. And now, long cart battle short, a 
a blue shell explodes and knocks Mario and Donkey Kong into the ocean below, and the rest of the Kongs get captured by Bowser. Peach and Toad barely escape and go back to evacuate the Mushroom Kingdom. Bowser then invades and takes Peach captive and prepares to get married. As a gift to Peach, Bowser decides to sacrifice all of his prisoners into lava, including Luigi. I don't know why Bowser decided to go full sacrifice mode here, I, but add stakes, I guess. I don't know. Mario and Donkey Kong go full Jonah and get swallowed by a fish and then propel themselves out with a rocket to get onto Bowser's ship to save Luigi just in time and Donkey Kong's dad. In a rage because he failed, Bowser sends a bullet bill to destroy the whole Mushroom Kingdom. Mario is then able to lure it away and trick it into going into the green pipe where it explodes. But this explosion causes Bowser's ship and all these characters to get sucked into the pipe and travel to New York where the final battle takes place. Bowser and his forces against Mario and Luigi. Now how are they going to win this? It's just two Italian plumbers. But the star fell out of the ship, the music starts playing, and they go super sane on this army. Okay, they absolutely wreck the whole army. Bowser can't even touch him. I mean, it's crazy. Anyway, Bowser's defeated, and they imprison him with a little blue mushroom, which shrinks him down. Mario and Luigi decide to live in the Mushroom Kingdom, and that's it. We're done. No more. Out. Goodbye. Yes, there's two post credit scenes, but we're done. Abrupt ending. This movie was made for the fans. Everything about it just points back to the games or some other Mario property. I love the references to both the old and the new games so that all generations of fans could recognize something from the Mario that they knew. A big concern I had going into this movie was all the voice acting choices. I'm sure I wasn't the only one that when we saw who was voice acting in this film, we went, what? And the trailers didn't really help ease any of those concerns. I mean, when we finally did get to hear him in the trailer, I was still a bit skeptical. But in the actual film, they all sound amazing, almost nothing like what we got in the trailer. And I've got to say, Chris Pratt does a pretty good Mario. I do have to say though, Bowser is the best part of this film. He's intimidating and fierce, yet delivers some of the funniest jokes and scenes. Jack Black plays him to perfection. The only complaint I had with Bowser was that he didn't have more screen time. The animation was fantastic throughout the film. Just incredible. I loved it. I loved the animation. I loved the character design choices. Animators, great job. Round of applause from me. As much as I enjoyed the film, it wasn't perfect. And one of the biggest problems I had with it was the pacing. Look, the film is only about an hour and a half, and it tries to cram a whole lot into that short time. It has to explain how Mario and Luigi get to the Mushroom Kingdom, has to introduce these kingdoms and all the characters, has to develop said characters, explain how power-ups work and how the world works, and much more, all within an hour and a half. There's just too much being introduced and happening in such a little time. Because of that, certain character interactions seem to be cut short. Like when Mario and Peach first meet, I feel like their interaction is super quick. It felt like less than a minute. It's like, hey, I'm trying to save my brother from Bowser. Oh, I also don't like Bowser. Let's team up, but wait, I gotta test you. But that's about all we get from their first interaction the two central most characters, that's their introduction. I wish characters were able to interact with each other more. Like even in the fish when Donkey Kong and Mario are quote unquote bonding over their dads not being proud of them or them thinking their dads aren't proud of them. It's one line and then boom, they're out of the fish. I mean, I just wish there was more time for these characters to interact with each other, and to build relationships. Also, a lot of characters are constantly sidelined because of this. Toad, all the scenes Toad are in are in the trailer. I was expecting so much more from Toad. None of the Kongs besides Donkey do anything. Diddy Kong gets one line. I was kind of disappointed by that. Even Luigi gets sidelined. And I know his whole thing was that he was captured, but I really would have liked to spend more time with Luigi in this movie. I really would have. And lastly, just with all the cramming, 
not a whole lot of characters are given arcs in this movie, which I think is the biggest and main problem I have with Princess Peach. For such an awesome character from all these different games, she really is one-dimensional here. She's just the girl boss. She doesn't struggle with anything. Heck, in the third act, she defeats Bowser and almost saves all the prisoners by herself. And again, I have no problem with her being powerful. I have no problem with her being strong. It's just, she has no development. I would have liked to see her go through a bit of growth, some sort of development of her character. I would have liked to see her in the beginning start out one way and finish another. Whether that be her wrestling with having to marry Bowser, enemy of her people, to save her people, or wanting to go back to Mario's world and be with the humans, but she has to struggle with the fact that she's a princess over a whole kingdom, or literally anything else. But she's not given any of that. She just takes everything in stride. Even Donkey Kong, who was introduced halfway through the film, got more of an arc than her. His whole relationship with his father, like, oh, my father's disappointed in me, and then him being able to save his father, and his father be, I am proud of you. Even the little thing like that for a side character was so much more than what Peach got, and it, it, it just made me really disappointed because Peach is such a cool character, and they could have done so much more with her. Overall, the Super Mario Bros. movie is a great start to the Mario movie franchise. It does play it a little too safe with the story, and it does struggle with pacing and runtime. But I'll take that over what we've gotten in the past any day of the week. I'm excited to see what the future of this franchise is. I'm excited to see what stories, what direction that they decide to go. I feel like they've alluded to so many different things within this movie, with Yoshi being in the post credit scene, with the carts being introduced in this movie, with Galaxy being referenced a couple times. There's a lot of different possibilities they can do here, and I'm excited to see what is next for the Mario franchise. But that's about it for me. Let me know what direction you think the Mario Bros. movie is going, and let me know what you thought about its pacing. Or, you know, if you're someone who doesn't like being told what to do, just write whatever you want. But I guess that's me telling you what to do at that point. So I don't know. You should comment though. I love hearing y'all's feedback. Again, that's it for me. As always, I love you all so, so much. I hope you have an absolutely blessed day. And until next time, peace out, bro skillets.